All right, what's on the bench? Uh, my favorite friend uh, brought over another uh, piece of equipment. Uh, this one is a Keithley. I love Keithley. Um, so what does Keithley, what is Keithley most famous for? It's most famous for low current measurements uh, from the way back days, like current pico, pico amp current meters, pico amp current sources, pico amp stuff, right? Really small amps. <laughs> and uh, this is an, a Keithley 487 pico ammeter slash voltage source. So the 486 is just the pico ammeter and the uh, 7 adds the voltage source. And if you have current and voltage, you can measure resistance. So that's why that's why this comes in handy. OK, so uh, if we look at the front panel, pretty self-explanatory. Um, there is a filter when you're measuring very low uh, currents or voltages stuff. You need a long integration time. So the filter comes in handy, either manual range, auto range triggering. And then here's the source and and then there's a wheel here. All right, so uh, let's see here. Let's take a look at it. Um, there's an Agilent Cal sticker on it that says it's due in 05. So 20 years out of, out of Cal, pretty standard stuff. Okay. Oh. All right, so what's on the back? All right, so uh, IEEE 488 HBIB power um, ground. There's a weird thing here. We'll talk about that. So here's how the, where the voltage source comes out. So there's a programmable voltage source. A voltage will come out on these connectors. All right. Um, and then there's this fancy connector right here. And I know it's going to be hard to see. We'll take a closer look a little bit later. But it's what's called the triax connector. And it is three connections. There's a center pin. There's a coax pin and then an outer shield pin. So there's basically two coaxes. So the outer is ground, uh, earth ground, and then the uh, inner shield is ground, and then the center pin is measurement. So the difference between the inner shield and the inner pin is where you want to measure your current, okay? This weird uh, analog output thing is, is, as far as I can tell, it's just for driving a, a strip recorder or a plotter. So I uh, don't know why it's on there, but I guess you can I don't know. I don't know why it's on there. There's also an interlock interlock uh, uh, connector. This thing will output plus or minus 500 volts. So if you want to run at high voltages, anything above 50 volts, uh, you need to have an interlock, make it safe. And uh, this is a really weird connector. I'll have to find one of those. And then there's a trigger, external trigger and meter complete output. So I guess if it's waiting for an integration time, it'll give you a signal here when the when the data is valid. It's also Cal lock. I've never seen that before. So anyway, I say we turn it on and give you a demo. For the demo, we're going to be using this little box here that uh, my friend included. Um, it was a it's triax in, triax out. Maybe this is a better, yeah, better view of the triax. Uh, there's a center conductor and a, a gold shield, and then this silver shield on the outside like a BNC, but it's it's not a BNC. It's three three pins. So it's yeah, tri X anyway. Um, so this used to be an HP product um, and it was divided by 10 and uh, from Yokogawa it made some really good stuff. Anyway, uh, it's been reworked and I reworked it a second time. So they had a 26.5 mega ohm resistor in series just kind of for calibration playing with and stuff. And I thought that was a really stupid value to use, but it's probably the only thing they had in their, in their stock room. I've put in a one gig ohm resistor. I have a one gig ohm. It's a 1% resistor, so it's nice. Anyway, so we're going to pop this on the back. Okay. And now we have a series resistor. If we put a, a voltage through that resistor, we'll create a current. All right. So let's see here. Let's get out a, uh, so this is triax. So we're going to need an adapter. Uh, let's see if I can let's see if my stuff's here. That's not the adapter I want. That's not the adapter I want. Uh, where did I put my adapter? Uh, 
Okay, so this is a triax to actual BNC adapter. So we'll put that on here. It ties the two shields together and brings out the center pin. So now we can put voltage in here. And uh, let's see, let's go ahead and use this. This is just an adapter that allows us to get voltage voltage in. Does that make sense? Well, anyway, ground and voltage in, it'll send a current through that resistor and we can measure it. So let's flip this thing around. Okay, that kind of sticks out the back. So we're gonna have to kind of bring it up off the bench here. It's gonna bash into things and that's gonna go there. Okay, let's turn it on. All right. So it comes up uh, with lots of digits, milliamps. Um, so we don't have any voltage going in the back. So uh, let's see here. Let's let's hook up some voltage to the back. All right. So I'm going to be using my little box over here. I'm going to be putting in one volt. So I have one volt across a one gig ohm resistor. Let's go to the uh, to the ranging here. Let's see. Uh, something's not right. Oh, my zero check is on. There we go. All right. Uh, auto. Auto range. Oh, there we go. So we have one zero 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 something nanoamps. One nanoamp. And if I put in uh, two volts, I get two nanoamps, three volts. All right, so yeah, we're measuring one nanoamp. All right, so that is the lowest scale. Um, it's a two nanoamp full range scale. So uh, one nanoamp, uh, one picoamp, 10 femtoamps. So it has 10 femtoamp resolution. <laughs> Very nice, huh? Uh, let's see here. Let's put in 0.1 volts and we're getting uh, 0.1 nanoamps. Let's change the range manually here. Yeah, that's the lowest range it'll do, right? It'll go to uh, microamps and milliamps. Okay, I think two and a half milliamps is the highest it'll do. And then uh, 10 femtoamps is the smallest it'll do. All right, so now you get the idea. Let's go back to one volt so all the math is easy. So we have one volt going in. We have a gig ohm resistor. One volt across one gig ohm is one nanoamp. So that is what we're doing. Uh, there is a, a auto range. I showed that. We'll do, it, we'll do the auto range. That's lit up. Uh, there is a filter. We can turn the filter off and it'll run faster. We turn the filter back on, it'll run slower. Uh, you can change the filter. Uh, we have digital plus analog filter. You can have just an analog filter or just a digital filter, but analog plus digital is the best. So we'll just leave it there. All right, so let's go ahead and demo the voltage source, okay? Okay, so you remember I'm using this thing there but it's got its own voltage source. So let's disconnect the connector from my uh, Datron and let me connect it to the, uh, let me connect it to the two bananas on the back of the instrument. All right. All right. So we now have uh, the, the uh, source hooked up through that resistor. If we turn on the source and then we adjust it for one volt, we get one nanoamp. One nanoamp because we have one volt output, okay? And uh, we can do uh, 11, we could do 41. We can go all the way up to 50 uh, without the interlock. It'll go up to 500 with the interlock, but now we're putting in 50 volts across a one gig ohm resistor. We're getting 50 nanoamps. Okay, does that make sense? All right, let's go ahead and get rid of this, this stuff. Let's go down lower. 
go over here. 0.1 volts is uh, 0.1 nanoamps. So that all makes sense, right? Okay. Now, because we have voltages and we have uh, currents, we can then press the ohms button, which is shift ohms. And now we are measuring gig ohms. So it's 0.9877 gig ohms at 0.1 volts. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Burden voltage. So let's let's make sure we have a, a good amount of, of the burden voltage. 10 volts, 50 volts burden voltage. So if we put 50 volts across that uh, one gig ohm resistor, we're getting 0.997, okay? Which is awfully darn close, because that's a 1% resistor. So we're measuring about 0.2% error. So very, very nice. So it does do gig ohms. Now, you want to get freaked out? <laughs> you want to get freaked out? Okay, let's see here. Let's change the range. Okay, uh, pico amps, uh, that's too big for that. Gig ohms. Okay, fine. Gig ohms, gig ohms, tera ohms. Now we're at 0 0.00069 tera ohms, tera ohms, tera ohms, and it won't let me go any farther than that because of the current that we have. Um, so uh, can we? Make it even smaller, maybe. Gig ohms. Tear ohms. Oops. Yeah, tear ohms. Anyway, uh, I need to figure out how to. Maybe I can turn this off and then we can go down farther. It will do pico, pico ohms. It'll do tera ohms, then it goes to pico ohms. And I've done that before with a different resistor. So let's try that. All right. In this box, I have a 91 gig ohm resistor. So let's put the 91 gig ohm resistor on there, and I think it can go down a range. All right, I've added the 100 gig ohm resistor in the back. And actually, I've measured it, measured it on other instruments, and it's actually a 91 gig ohm resistor. It's one of those Soviet glass-filled resistors. I did a video on them a while back, but it's probably a 10% resistor, and 91 is 91 is 10% of, uh, of 100. So um, that's what we get. Anyway, so we have uh, 91 gig ohm. Okay, very nice and at 40 volts okay you have to have some voltage compliance if you don't have any voltages at all it won't do anything even at 10 volt uh burden voltage it will measure 91. we can go up to 50 i think for a little bit more accurate measurement you can watch the filter uh settle in yeah and i think there's some heating of that resistor uh so you're going to get a little bit different uh different numbers depending on what burden voltage you, or, you know, source voltage you put on it. Anyway, uh, and then we can go down in range. Let's see here, this one? Yeah, tera ohms. So giga ohms and tera ohms. And uh, we can go down to uh, 0 0.00011 tera ohms. Yeah, it'd be nice to be able to go up here into the tera ohm range. Anyway, there you go. New instrument. Looks like a lot of fun.